Here with me, I have the iPad Pro, the 2021 model that has the M1 chip in it. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I edit my photos using Lightroom. I also love photo manipulation and I spend a lot of my time in Photoshop. When this video is done and you find it useful, please leave a like. If you're using a phone, most of the functions that we're going to be using are free, but we're also going to use mask tools and that requires you to upgrade to the premium package which is around two dollars per month or 20 us dollars per year that may be a lot for some people but that may also be nothing for some people i would say just stick around and watch what uh, results you get from using the mask tools and then you can determine if it's worth your money to be paying two us dollars every month okay so i'm going to open up lightroom this is the image we have and it's not that great <laughs> when i took this image um, I didn't really put the correct settings and it's almost like it has a red uh, overlay on top of it and you can see the clouds are also a bit uh, purple-ish so we're going to try fix that we're going to first go into the light tab and fix the exposure just to make it a little bit lighter than it already is uh, take up the shadows most of the times when I have an overexposed sky uh, taking down the highlights usually brings back a little bit of detail and I'm just going to take the whites down a bit and increase the exposure so this is just to fix the lighting for now but we'll get back to it and we'll go to the color tab just to fix the weird colors that are going on here um, and we can use the white balance so the temperature i'm going to take it down a bit to the blue side and the tint i'll also take it down to the green side sort of using my eyes just to see what it should have actually looked like on the day i mean you should use your eyes anyway <laughs> if you're editing pictures this kind of looks like what it should have looked like on the day so this is what it looks like now and this is before this is now this is before i'm happy with how it looks now i'm just gonna add a bit of saturation and i'm actually happy with where we are for now i mean this is an image that one can already post on social media if they wanted but i actually want to even dive a little bit deeper and draw attention to one subject because right now the entire image is equally exposed but i want to draw attention to this person here my lovely wife <laughs> who's sipping on a little some sum to do that we're going to use uh masks and you can find them on this icon once you click on it you will find a plus icon at the bottom which can give you different options you have a brush mask you have linear gradient radial gradient and the first two are actually quite recent ones that were added where Lightroom uses machine learning to intelligently identify a person or a sky in your image so we're going to use one of those a bit later but for now I'm going to start with the radial gradient mask so you can just click on it and drag it out so the whole point of a mask is to isolate a certain area uh, of your image or even video that you want to manipulate in this case i want to manipulate the entire image except the central point which has our subject so now that i've selected the central point i can use the invert tool which is on the left bottom side uh, so that it selects everything except for our subject the mask doesn't have to be perfect so now that we've selected um, everything apart from our subject i can now either make the outside brighter or darker and I'm, i want to make it a bit darker so that the light shines a little bit more on her and we can take down i'm going to take down the shadows the highlights increase the contrast a little bit i think i'm happy with that for now and then I'm going to add another mask. This time I'm going to use a brush. And the more masks you have, the more they will add and pile up on top of each other here. And the good thing about a brush mask is you can go into specific areas that you want to manipulate. In this case, um, I would like to uh, manipulate her face and just overexpose it a little bit more than it is. And once you click on a brush mask, you get options on your left side 
the top one being uh, your size so you can change the size of the brush the middle one being your feather the more feather you have the softer the edges of your brush and the third one being your flow which is more like your opacity so if it's at zero your brush is invisible and the more you go up the more visible it is so i'm just gonna brush roughly on top of her face and now i can just manipulate that part of the image and i'm just going to expose it just a little bit and add a little bit of shadow uh, and i think i'm happy with that so click on done so far this image is looking better this is what it looked like initially and now it's sort of like a little bit more central to our subject but i don't like how it looks because she is well illuminated but we don't know or we can't see where the light is coming from so we are going to do a little bit of fiction <laughs> so i'm going to go back to settings and what i actually want to do is go under color but this time we go into color mix and you get the different colors um, that you usually would find in an image and you can change the U, the saturation, the luminance of the different colors. And I'm actually going to play around with a few of them. One being the green, so the, the grass and the trees. Uh, just going to desaturate them. So sometimes I actually just drag these sliders just to use more of a trial and error just to see where each color is. So of course, if I do this, I can see where um, this color is affecting then the sky i'm actually since the sky is the only blue thing here um, the blue slider will affect the sky only so i'm gonna desaturate the sky a bit just to make it a little bit more gray and i'm happy with that and now we're gonna go to our masks again this time around i'm i'm using a radial gradient again and I'm gonna to go to the top right corner and just notice that my feather is actually soft edges and I'll you will see why that's important in a bit and then I'm gonna raise the exposure quite high the shadows as well the whites and I'm just gonna drag it down here a bit essentially what I'm trying to do here is to add a fake Sun that's shining through the clouds <laughs> that's an actual thing isn't it and i'm going to add another mask uh, this time i'm going to use a brush and oops i'm going to do that just going to zoom in a little i'm going to use a brush and for this one i am going to use a feather of about 80 and the brush size i want to keep it around yeah about 15 is fine and just make sure that your flow as well is not that high so i'm gonna use 55 but since i'm using an apple pencil uh second gen i can actually uh, either press hard or press light um that will actually affect how hard the brush is so i'm just gonna do some light strokes here of a brush so that we can include some fake rays of light so that it makes it look like her face is actually being illuminated by the rays of the sun that's actually funny to say but once I'm done I'm just gonna raise the exposure a little as you can see those are the rays that I drew but I'm not gonna expose them too much just enough i'm gonna also increase the exposure of this fake sun that's looking good what i'm actually gonna do is i'm going to include another mask this time i'm gonna use a linear gradient you can drag it from the bottom or you can drag it from the top or, or the sides and i'm gonna use this to add a bit of exposure to the ground since we have a sun that's shining so bright that's actually looking really good it's actually looking good i like it now 
we are going to add another mask. <laughs> so many masks. Uh, but hey, the image has to look good. This time we're going to use the select subject uh, mask. So if I click on it, as you can see, it uh, uses machine learning to quickly select just the subject. I actually want to uh, only do changes to uh, the rest of the image, but her. So I'm going to invert this again. And then I'm going to go to detail and decrease the sharpness. This is just going to slightly blur out the rest of the image, except for her. I don't know if you can see on this video, but it's actually affecting um, the background, but not her, uh, which is nice. So I think I'm going to, I'm done with masks here. So I'm going to go back to lighting and just edit a little bit more, some contrast. I think I'm actually going to take down the shadows a bit and the whites and a bit of contrast there. And I like what I see so far. It's looking good. I think I'm going to go to color again, try to, to see if the white balance can make some difference here. So now I'm going to go into effects as well and uh, I'm going to introduce a vignette. So you can either make it white or I'm just going to make it black and feather it out a bit. Um, and I actually want to crop this already for Instagram, which is going to be four by five. I think I'm happy with this done. I like how it look, it's looking so far. Um, and we're going to increase that vignette a little bit again. And under details, we can um, include a little bit of noise reduction and sharpening to our image. So I could go on with this image for some time, but I'm actually happy with how it looks right now. And this was just to show you some of the tools inside Lightroom and how you can sort of use them to achieve these results. I mean, this is where we came from <laughs> and this is where we are. This is such a huge difference it makes it it makes the image look a little bit more well thought out now i can export this and send it to my wife so many different people would edit this picture differently it's just knowing how to use the tools and knowing how to translate what you're feeling and what you're thinking into the image and i think you know if you're not familiar with lightroom just start playing around with it and see where you get to. I hope this video was helpful. I'm really impressed on the iPad Pro and how it's so snappy. These are actually Sony RAW images. So each of these are like 30 megabytes each and it didn't feel like it was lagging at all. It was just going through all the images. I've been editing other images before this video and there was no lag at all. I think if you are an aspiring photographer, professional photographer, this would be one of the best tools to have, especially the 2021 model, which has the M1 chip in it, because it's just fast. I can actually think of some computers which wouldn't be this fast inside Lightroom. One of the best things is the Apple Pencil as well. Just being able to use these on the brushes and just getting details that you wouldn't be able to get on a computer or a laptop. I know I didn't go in depth with all the tools. That's because that just takes a lot of time. But if you want me to do a follow up video and for me to cover everything and you promise that you will watch it, then I will do it. Apart from that, thank you for sticking around until next time.